What's up, whiskey lovers, and welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Straight with me, Big Al. As you know, it's a special episode, it's number 100. But if you followed the channel a while, you know that I've done more than 100 videos. I've looked at more than 100 whiskies, but in terms of doing a full review, I like to have a full bottle to review. This, while not a special occasion whiskey, it is special in its own right. And why is that? Well, it incorporates whiskey from every province of Ireland. That's Ulster, Munster, Leinster and Connacht. It selects the best of all those provinces, blends them together, and what you get is the aptly named Shamrock Irish Whiskey. Kirker and Greer was established in 2007 uh, by Richard Ryan and Steve Pattinson. And what they've done here with this particular blend is they've gone around all those four provinces, Ulster, Leinster, Munster and Connacht, and picked out whiskies from each and blended them together to get the taste of what they say is the whole of Ireland. Pretty good stuff, but what exactly is in it? We know most of it, but we don't know it all. So let me explain. I'm going to have to look at my tablet here because my old timer head will not remember it all okay so what we've got here is three whiskies that are matured in first fill, first filled bourbon casks and that is 60.8 percent grain 30.8 percent malt 2.6 percent peated malt and then an oloroso sherry cask at 5.8 pot still now the pot still it comes from connaught and it is as you would expect Mulded and non mulded barry, and there's barra oats in there as well. And it was fully matured for up to five years in Oloroso sherry casks. So, if we head over to Monster, we're going to the West Cork Distillery. We've got triple distilled single malt whiskey and first fill axe bourbon casks. Now, the bit we don't know from Ulster, and what we've got here, interestingly, is a 16 year old. Triple distilled single malt whiskey from First Fill Axe Bourbon Casks. Uh, and it says here an undisclosed heritage distillery from the wild Atlantic coast of Northern Ireland. Hmm, I think we can all have a fair guess of what that is. And then we head to Monster. And it is a double distilled single malt and a triple distilled peated single malt whiskey. And this will not bring in any peaty flavour, but what they say it brings is a vehicle to carry the flavours of the rest. And it's only down on the low percentage marks. But let's see how it all blends together. I'll put a few graphics up on the screen so you can see what I mean. And uh, we'll take it from there. So with all that out of the way, let's get into it and see how that combination of all those elements of Irish whiskey come together to create the shamrock, the symbol of Ireland. So, as always, if you've got a pour of this, bring it into your glass and drink along, because whiskey's always best shared with like-minded people. So, on the nose, sláinte. Right off, there's malt, there's honey, classic Irish notes. There's red apple, a slight hint of cinnamon as well. Some orange spice coming into play. A wee bit tropical now in terms of pineapple. And then there's cinnamon coming in again. A wee bit of melon. And that melon is like, it's dusted with a wee bit of brown sugar. It's dusted with a wee bit of that cinnamon. Still orange spice. There's a wee bit of a buttery element coming through on the nose as well. A wee bit of grain coming into play now as well. There's almost like there's a touch of rye in there as well. And a wee bit of chocolate. Milky chocolate. A very nice nose with lots going on. So we'll try over on the palate now and take it from there, sláinte. Right on the arrival on the palate, it's very malty once again. 
a lot of malt up front and then there's a nice richness of barrel char that comes right through after that very nice and there's a bit of a tingle on the tongue too and that's that orange spice coming into play again it gives a very nice slight tingle on the tongue but a lovely effer pheasant mouthfeel you can get a touch of green in there as well and there's some nice vanilla and milk chocolate coming in around the edges to give it another wee touch of complexity quite a lot going on here very very nice indeed now on the second sip the grain comes into play a wee bit more it's much more to the fore that orange spice becomes a wee bit more dark in it you're as dark chocolate and then the tingle moves from the front of the palate right through to the mid and rear of the palate and it really stays alive it keeps those flavors alive there's oak it's rich and it's deep the vanilla comes into play again and it really does linger nicely now this could probably because of the fact that there's a, a 16 year old whiskey here into the mix and quite a hefty dose of it too i'm really digging this it does linger and now as it lingers that chocolate note becomes more like a chocolate raspberry influence again a wee bit of a raspberry ruffle perhaps even a wee tiny tiny hint of coconut right around the edge pineapple again bit of mango and this is what happens when you let your dog out instead of the cats well the cats were out but the monty was chasing them so they've all disappeared they're friendly enough in the house but once they get outside it's a different story but anyway let's go in for the finish monty keep quiet you see that worked just like talking to the wife never heat it but anyway the mouthfeel here it's oily it's effervescent it's nicely mouth coating and you know what for something that's at 43 percent abv which retails at around 35 quid but i got this on a bargain eh, on a clearance sale in tesco for 22 as you do or as i tend to do you know what you can't really fault it i've been meaning to do a review of this for a while now and i've had a couple of bottles of it and you know what's a sign of a good whiskey when you get the bottle and you're meaning to do a review and then all of a sudden you're sipping away at it you're sipping away at it you're sharing it with people and then the whiskey's gone and you're like ah oh, balls i meant to do a review of that so as you can see it almost happened again because i'm right down at the dregs of this one but you know what it's a sign of a good whiskey and you and you know what this is a damn good whiskey and i really like it it's got a nice complexity with it it's got a wee bit of body with it even at the 43 percent and it has elements of all those things the grain the single malt the single pot still and while it has those lighter fruity elements of an irish whiskey it's also got those deeper richer elements going on as well and they blend nicely together to give this whiskey just something a wee bit extra that a lot of uh, Irish whiskies in this price range don't have. It's got a nice complexity, it's got a nice balance and I'm really digging it and I can't say anything really bad about it. That's a lovely, lovely whiskey and one I'd recommend you buy. So in terms of a score it's going to be an 86.5 for me i really like this whiskey i really like the way it's been done and you know what there's definitely going to be more of this for me it's a uh, it's a no-brainer lovely whiskey and uh, i look forward to trying more from the Kirker and Greer range so thanks once again folks for hanging out if you've had this let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and as always, thanks for your support. Thanks to the new subscribers. Thanks especially to those 
who support me on Patreon, on Subscribestar, <clears throat> mean so much to me, more than you never know. And until the next time, folks, look after yourselves, look after each other, and keep on drinking your whiskey the way you like it. Sláinte on. Thanks for watching folks, I really do appreciate it. Please check out these other reviews and if you'd like to support the channel, the best way is by subscribing, liking and commenting. And don't forget to ring that bell for all video notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. Cheers.